Over the last few decades, we have learned a lot about our senses, about how we see, about how we smell, about how we taste. We knew very little about the sense of touch. What makes touch so unique is that they have to transform this physical force into a language that cells can use to communicate with each other. So these ion channels are, in a way, entry into this whole system of how you sense touch, how you sense pain, how do you sense blood pressure. Piezos are a protein that we call ion channels. And when they open, ions come through. And when they do, cells get activated. Most of your cells communicate through chemicals, but piezos do something very special, which is they sense mechanical force, physical forces. So how do you actually feel when someone touches you? So you have these neurons close to your backbone and they send processes, little parts of their cell, all over your body. And at the tips of these neurites is where the sensors of pressure are. And so every time you touch your finger, one of these tiny, tiny receptors get activated. So think of that as an electric switch. Once you turn on the switch, then you have a tiny bit of electricity going through these neurons, which then is enough to tell your brain that something touched your you know, second finger of your right hand. So that's how it works. It's a bunch of neurons connected to each other. And at the all beginning, there's this little piezo channel that's being activated and initiating this signal. We initially found them as touch sensors, but we are finding out that they play very important roles in almost every process in our body that depends on pressure sensing. So this includes touch, proprioception, pain, as well as sensing pressure in internal organs, such as blood pressure, stomach stretch, bladder stretch, etc. Proprioception is based on your sensory neurons that sense stretch of your muscles. What you feel is not the muscle stretch. What you feel is the position of your limbs in space. So if I close my eyes and raise my hand, I know exactly where my fingertips are, and I can do things like close my eyes and touch my nose. Most people don't know about it because you're not very conscious of it. Also, you cannot turn it off. But it is absolutely required, as we know from patients who don't have proprioception, Without it, you have a very hard time doing simple things like just walking. Interoception is um, sensing of internal organs, if you will. So for example, you have neurons which monitor every beating heart, and they also monitor blood pressure inside your aorta. So very important for survival, but you're not aware of it at all. Other senses of interoception you're very aware of such as your filling of your bladder. And this is again very important as many of the pathologies develop with older age, for example, of, of sensing this important stimulus. So we think that future research on mechanosensation and the piezo channels could benefit humanity in finding novel medicines for treating pain, hypertension, urinary incontinence, diabetes, and many other indications. The Nobel Assembly at Karolinski Institute has today decided to award the 2021 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine jointly to David Julius and Ardem Pataputian for their discoveries of receptors for temperature and touch. One of the interesting things about the Nobel is that it gets announced afternoon in Sweden, and that's about 2 a.m. in California. And they call you pretty much an hour or half an hour before the public announcement to let you know. And uh, 
I had do not disturb on. So I got four phone calls from Stockholm, but I didn't answer and I wasn't aware of it. And then my dad called me and he has a landline, does not have do not disturb. So they, they, they got him on the phone and he understood what's going on and then proceeded to call me. So by the time all of this happened, it was literally a couple of minutes before the announcement. And so we got to watch it on the laptop and uh, the rest was a blur. And even when people tell you that, oh, you might be on a short list or you might get it, it's still a massive shock to actually hear it. And it seems to be so special to so many people, both in science and beyond. That's what's hard to anticipate is how excited people get and how wonderful it is for you to hear that from friends and colleagues and fellow countrymen and places you've been from and places you've been associated with. It brings me great honor today to decorate the Nobel Prize winner in Physiology or Medicine, Professor Ardem Patakoutian, with the Lebanese Order of Merit from the first grade Golden. Please, Dr. Ardem. I have a complicated background. I'm Armenian of origin. I grew up in Lebanon, so my first 18 years were in Beirut, Lebanon, and I immigrated to the United States. But just seeing the, the excitement of the Lebanese and Armenian community has, has really reconnected me to, to those cultures. This happens to be the first Nobel laureate for anyone of Armenian origin, as well as anyone from Lebanon. So they're really celebrating and I, and I really cherish that. I carry Lebanon with me as part of my identity. Born and raised in Beirut of Armenian origin, I've adopted America as my home now, married Nancy, whose parents are immigrants from Taiwan, and I'm surrounded in the lab with smart young scientists from all over the world. Thank you again for this honor, and I do hope to visit Lebanon sometime soon. Thank you. I was, um, I think, seven years old when the Civil War started. So there was a lot of tough times. We almost never went out at night. We um, were always worried about bombs falling here and there. Beirut was two sides. There was West Beirut and East Beirut. And the border was difficult to cross. As an 18-year-old, I lived in West Beirut and actually was at a party in East Beirut. <laughs> and I had stayed with a friend, but early in the morning, I decided to walk back. And while I was crossing the border, I heard sniper shots, which is you know, very terrifying. So I started running. And as I got into West Beirut, there were some militants on the side of a building motioning me to come over because they thought it was very suspicious that an 18 year old would be running from one side of Beirut to another. So they held me for a day, asked me all kinds of questions, uh, they actually put a gun to my knee and said, they're gonna shoot, see if I feel pain. It was, it was very uh, terrifying. And uh, I remember then walking home when they let me go and I walked home and said, I'm out of here. Um, so that was the last time I've been in Lebanon. So I think I've kind of tried not to take things for granted based on these experiences. And I think that's, that's, that's served me very well. At the same time, I feel like this country has given me amazing opportunities. When I came to the US 18, 18 years old, didn't even realize that science as a career was a possibility. The only reason I worked in the laboratory was to get a letter of recommendation for medical school. But once I started working in a laboratory, I absolutely fell in love with the, the doing science, the culture, international group of interesting people just doing what, what everyone would wanna do in science, which is discover new things, ask questions that no one's asked before. 
and he was very, very contagious. And I immediately realized this is my calling and I should let go of my dreams to go to medical school and, and, and do this. I think in science, we all want to do important work. And my biggest advice to young scientists is to be fearless because many times we think of an interesting question, but we realize that it might be risky. There's competitors, more famous labs working on this, or it's very risky, you might fail. But it's important to think that you want to do important things and it's worthwhile taking the risks. If I think back, on 20 years ago when we started this, I realized what a big risk I took on working on something that was very difficult to do, many other labs were trying to do, and the chances of our failure were pretty high. So you, you wanna take care not to take very high risks so your, your rate of success is very low, but at the same time, it is important to be fearless and try something important. That's why we all get into science and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we took that route. Yeah.